Hallelujah. God is good. Thank you, Father God, for another day. You're so wonderful, so awesome, so lovely. And we just thank you for being our provider. Thank you for being our comforter. Thank you for being our healer. Thank you for being our Savior. You are the Redeemer. Hallelujah. And we come to you for all of our needs. We pray that you'll bless this teaching time and that you will instruct us in righteousness so that you would receive all the glory. In Yeshua's name, we pray and ask it all. Amen. Thank you, my friends, for coming back. And today we will be talking about the second part of this series, uh, focus on this day when the door is opened in heaven. And on this day, when the door is opened in heaven, everything that you see in this picture will manifest suddenly, instantly, and much more. Um, but I want to talk about how John in the book of Revelation sees this day when he sees the door open in heaven. He sees the door open in heaven on four separate occasions. And on each of those four separate occasions, John is seeing the scene play out from a different perspective, but yet it's still the same scene. And so I want to go over that today with you because we have to realize and understand that uh, the book of Revelation in the Hebrew, I mean in the Greek, is titled Apocalypsis. And Apocalypsis means an unveiling, an uncovering, a revealing. So the Apocalypsis is a, an unveiling, an uncovering, a revealing of who Jesus Christ is. And so in order for John to understand the unveiling, the uncovering, the revealing of Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, Yeshua HaMashiach takes him up to heaven. After he was on earth, uh, John is told with a voice that sounded like a trumpet to come up here and he would reveal, uncover, unveil more things that are to come. And we pick up that vision in Revelation chapter 4. And we also have to remember that in the Bible, uh, there wasn't uh, chapters and verses introduced into the Holy Text until about the 16th century. Prior to the 16th century, uh, there was only book names, you know, and everything was all together. There were no divisions, no chapters, no no verses. And so um, sometimes when we read things, especially the book of Revelation, we, we, we tend to read it in a linear fashion. Like this comes after that, that comes after this, you know. And uh, the book of Revelation definitely is working towards a linear a goal, which is the new heaven and the new earth. But everything that is in each chapter in the book of Revelation doesn't come in sequential chronological order. And so I want to show that to you today because uh, we can see that John uh, sees the temple opening uh, from four different perspectives. And each perspective shows a fuller revelation, a fuller unveiling of the event. Because everything changes when the door is opened in heaven. Everything changes instantly when the door is opened to heaven. Uh, because that's the cloudy day. That's the day when God comes on the cloud and uh, he comes to rapture his church. But he also comes to bring judgment upon an earth that has rejected him. And so I want to go over uh, uh, those four scriptures today. And we're going to start right here in Revelation chapter 4. Where we read starting at verse 1. After this, I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was, as it were, of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up here, and I will show you things which must be hereafter. And immediately I was in the Spirit. And behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne, and he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone. And there was a rainbow round about the throne, and sight like unto an emerald. And round about the throne were twenty-four seats, and upon the seats I saw twenty-four elders sitting, clothed in white raiment, and they had on their heads crowns of gold. And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices, and there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. Hallelujah. So right here we see that John is taken up to heaven in Revelation chapter 4, verses 1 through 5, and he sees... Uh, the throne, the first thing that he sees when he's transferred through this door, when this door to, to heaven is open, you know, he's immediately taken from the earth in the spirit up to the third heaven, the third heaven where uh, God dwells, where eternity is. He, he immediately comes here 
uh, once he hears the voice, let speaks like a trumpet to tell him that tells him to come up here. And upon getting up here to the third heaven, the Bible says that John sees a throne. The first thing that he sees is the throne of God. And uh, on the throne, he sees one who uh, who looks like a jasper and a sardine stone. And around the throne, he sees a, a rainbow uh, in color like an emerald. And before the throne, he sees the seven spirits of God. And, and around the throne, he sees uh, the 24 elders who are who have gold crowns on it and are clothed in right raiment. And, and, and the first thing that I, I want to point out is that what comes from the throne when John gets up to the third heaven? The Bible says that uh, when he gets there from the throne, he 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 sees uh, uh, proceeding from the throne voices, uh, thunder and lightning. Uh, let's read that in verse uh, chap in verse five, uh, verse five, chapter four. And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices. And there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. Hallelujah. So when John is immediately taken up in the spirit in the heaven, uh, three things that he says proceed from the throne of God are voices, thunders, and lightnings. Now, 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 these three elements that proceed from the throne of God are are key to understanding what's going on in this revelation. You see, because when we turn over to uh, Revelation chapter eight, we see the same three things mentioned, but two more things are added. Hallelujah. Now, let's go to Revelation chapter eight as John continues to get more unveiling. Hallelujah. In Revelation chapter eight, we see in uh, starting at verse uh uh, verse, uh, we'll start at verse, uh, verse two. And I saw the seven angels which stood before God and to them were given seven trumpets. And another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer. And there was given unto him much incense that he should offer with the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar, which was before the throne and the smoke of the incense, which came with the prayers of the saints ascended up before God out of the angel's hand. And the angel took the censer and filled it with fire off the altar and cast it unto the earth. And there were voices and thunderings and lightnings and an earthquake. He sees uh, in Revelation 8 verses 2 through 5, he sees more of the revelation of the day when the door is open in heaven. And John is now in heaven and he sees uh, the seven angels who stand before God. And to them were given seven trumpets, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And after he saw that, he said he saw another angel who had a golden censer, and he, he came before the golden altar. And he was uh, given much incense, this angel right here, so that he would uh, offer it upon the golden altar. And the incense were, 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 were uh, the prayers of all the saints. And and when he did that, when this angel offered up what was given to him inside this golden censer upon the golden altar, the Bible says that uh, the smoke of the incense from the golden altar ascended up before God uh, from the angel's hand. And then this same angel uh, took the golden censer and, and took coals of fire from off uh, the golden altar. And he came down over here hallelujah in this illustration and he took what was in the golden censer and he threw it upon the earth and once uh this angel throws the contents of the golden censer onto the earth the bible says that there were thunders and and noises and and lightnings and there was an earthquake and uh, the fire from the golden altar is poured out upon the earth so we see that john saw the noises and the thunders and the lightnings when he first got to heaven uh, in Revelation chapter 4. When he was first called up, he saw the noises, the thunders, and the lightnings that came from God's throne. But he didn't see the fire from the golden altar being poured out, nor did he see the earthquake that took place on the earth. Because in Revelation chapter 4, John was taken immediately up into heaven when the door was open. Immediately on the day when the door was open, John was taken up into heaven, but he still saw and heard the voices, the thunders, and the lightnings that came from God's throne, but he did not see 
uh, the full revelation of what happens on, on the day when the door is opened in heaven. You see, in Revelation chapter 8, uh, verse 5, John's view of how the temple is opened in heaven gives him more information. But that's not all. If we go to Revelation chapter 11, we see John getting the third vision of how the temple in heaven is open. And in Revelation chapter 11, verse 19, we read, we'll read the King James. And the temple of God was opened in heaven. And there was seen in his temple the ark of his testament. And there were lightnings and voices and thunderings and an earthquake and great hail. Okay, so we have the same elements again. Uh, but this time it directly says that the temple in heaven is open. The temple of God in heaven is open. In Revelation chapter 11, verse 19, it specifically says that. And uh, the Ark of His Covenant is seen. Hallelujah. The Ark of His Covenant is, is the throne, the mercy seat. This is where God sits. And God says that the Ark of His Covenant was seen on this day. And there were noises, and there were thunders, and there were lightnings. There was an earthquake uh, and great hail. Hallelujah. You see, I, I put the noises and, and the thunders and, and the lightnings uh, in between the sea of glass in between uh, the third heaven and the second heaven because the noises and the thunders and the lightnings uh, are seen in both places. They're seen when John is taken up in uh, the rapture. He sees the noises and uh, the, the lightnings and the thunders, but he doesn't see the earthquake and the great hail uh, on Revelation chapter 4 verse 1 when he's taken immediately immediately through the open door in heaven. He doesn't see the earthquake and the great hail because he's no longer on the earth. He's taken up into heaven. He's taken up into the Father's house. He's taken into the place of safety. He's taken into the only place where we can have shelter. Hallelujah. Because John is, is part of the body of Christ and uh, uh, far be it from uh, God to destroy the righteous of the wicked. Far be it from God to pour out his wrath, to pour out his, 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 his great and terrible day upon those who belong to his body. No, on the day of the rapture, the righteous are caught up into the Father's house. And, and John is taken up into the Father's house in Revelation 4, uh, verses 1 through 5. He's taken immediately through this open door. And all, he, and all he sees is the throne first. He sees the throne, the 24 elders, the rainbow, the seven spirits of God. And he sees the voice the thunders and the lightnings, and he sees the one who sitteth on the throne. But he doesn't see the earthquake uh, or, or the great hail. It's not until he gets further revelation. It's not until he gets further revelation that he sees that. And in Revelation um, uh, chapter 8, 2 through 5, he sees how this day starts. He sees the, the angel from uh, 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 with the golden censer who, who goes to the golden altar. He sees the, the, the service from Leviticus 16 play out. He sees that when the, when, the, uh, when the angel offers the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar, he sees how the, the the smoke from the golden altar arises before God. And we read in Leviticus chapter 16 that when that ritual is performed on earth, that uh, when the high priest would go into the Holy of Holies and he would take the two handfuls of incense and offer it upon the golden uh uh, the golden censer uh, upon the live coals, the burning coals, the smoke would fill the holy of holies, and and the uh, uh, the the cloud would come inside the holy of holies, and God would appear upon the cloud, and 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 the high priest would not die because he would come to make an atonement for himself and and then for the people. So right here we see the same order of service happening. God is about to appear in the cloud. God is about to appear in the cloud. In heaven and, and and when God appears in the cloud he comes through the open door heaven heaven the third heaven is breached uh, to, to the second heaven and down to the first heaven uh, on this day and, and because God is coming on the cloud uh, what comes from the cloud is uh, is fire and, uh, and hailstones and and terrible destruction uh, what comes on the cloudy day is this all of these elements are, are manifested on the earth. This is what happens when uh, the door is open. Hallelujah. Fire, noises, thunder, lightning, and an earthquake come. But for the righteous, hallelujah, 
for those who, who belong to the body of Christ. Uh, we do not see the earthquake or the hail that comes on this day. All we see is God. We see, we, we, we see the voices, the thunders, and the lightnings, but we do not experience the earthquake or the great hail. Uh, praise the Lord. Uh, and let's go to another vision, the last vision, the fourth one, where God uh, reveals the total destruction that comes on the earth. So now we get the whole shebang. We get the whole picture here in Revelation chapter 16. Uh, this is the fourth vision, the fourth uh, series of revelations that John gets in the book of Revelation about how the temple in heaven is open. And so right here, we get the total picture in Revelation chapter 16, starting at verse 18. Then there came flashes of lightning, rumblings, peals of thunder, and a severe earthquake. No earthquake like it has ever occurred since mankind has been on earth. So tremendous was the quake. The great city split into three parts, and the cities of the nations collapsed. God remembered Babylon the great, and gave her the cup filled with the wine of the fury of his wrath. Every island fled away, and the mountains could not be found. From the sky, huge hailstones, each weighing about a hundred pounds, fell on people, and they cursed God on account of the plague of hail, because the plague was so terrible. So right here, John gets the fourth of, uh, uh, and the final vision of how the temple in heaven is open and what happens. So let's let's go back. Remember in uh, chapter four, the rapture. John is taken up into heaven. There's a door open. A trumpet uh, comes from the throne of God, uh, and the voice is heard telling John to come up here. And he will. Uh, the voice tells him that he will show uh, John things which must come after this, after the church age. After chapters 2 and 3, which uh, are all in regard to the church. And so John is taken immediately from earth into heaven. And the first thing that he sees is the throne. And, he, and from the throne proceed voices and thunders and lightnings. But there's no earthquake or, or no hail mentioned because John is now in heaven. He's taken immediately uh, from earth into heaven, which is symbolic of the rapture. There, there's no judgment that comes upon John. John uh, receives none of the plagues because he belongs to the body of Christ. And then as he further goes on in the book of Revelation, we get to chapter 8. And what does John see? Chapter 8, John sees how the temple in heaven is open. And the temple in heaven is open when the angel performs the same ritual that the high priest performed on the Day of Atonement, when the angel in heaven uh, took the golden censer with the prayers of all saints and offered it upon the golden altar. Then the smoke uh, came up before God, and then the angel uh, took a uh, fire from off the altar and came down and threw it upon the earth. And once uh, the angel threw it upon the earth, the Bible says that there were noises and thunders and lightnings and an earthquake and fire that uh, that that was thrown on the earth. This fire tur turned into the hailstones that we see in Revelation chapter 11. Revelation chapter 11, hallelujah. It specifically tells us that the temple of God in heaven is open in Revelation 11 chapter 19. The temple of God in heaven is open on the same day. And the Ark of His Covenant is seen. The Ark of His Covenant is uh, the throne of God. Uh, the earthly tabernacle, it was, uh, uh, you know, the Ark of the Covenant with uh, the cherubim covering it uh, and the mercy seat upon it. And, and so it was a, an exact replica, uh, a type of, of, of what was the reality in heaven. And the Ark of His Covenant is seen on this day. That is why when John is taken to heaven in Revelation chapter 4, the first thing that he talks about seeing is the throne. The throne is the Ark of His Covenant in Revelation chapter 11 verse 19. The first thing that's mentioned when the temple of God is open in heaven. The Ark of His Covenant is seen. And what happens? There's noises and thunders and lightnings, an earthquake and great hail. So now in Revelation chapter 11, verse 19, the fire that the angel from Revelation chapter 8 uh, took from off the golden altar, this fire that he took from off here, it becomes the hail. It becomes the great hail that comes upon the earth. Uh, and the earthquake is still there. The earthquake and the great hail are the devastating effects 
on the day when the temple of God is open in heaven. And then we get to the whole shebang. Revelation chapter uh, 16. And we get the whole thing. We get the whole thing. Now this, now, this is the third heaven. It doesn't say that the Ark of His Covenant was seen. But it does say that there were noises and thunders and lightnings. Hallelujah. And then it says that there was great hail. There was great hail. And there was a great earthquake. Uh, a, a, an earthquake so bad that... There's never been an earthquake like it in in, the, in in human history, and then God said that uh, from uh, the hail that rained down, uh, it was about a hundred pounds each, and and the Bible says that men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hail, because the plague was so terrible, and the Bible says that the great city was uh, broken up into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell, and great Babylon came in remembrance before God to give unto Babylon the great the the fierceness of the cup of his wrath. Uh, Babylon the Great is none other than America, and America will be totally destroyed on this day, totally destroyed on the cloudy day. Uh, if if you're familiar, uh, in the Old Testament, when it talks about the day of the Lord, the day of the Lord is always mentioned as coming as uh, like a destruction upon Babylon. It begins with the destruction of Babylon. The day of the Lord, which is the cloudy day, it begins with the destruction of Babylon. Babylon Babylon the Great is, is slated for destruction, and it, and it begins on the cloudy day. And in the Old Testament right here, it talks about the vision that uh, Amos, uh, Isaiah the son of Amos saw. The burden of Babylon, which Isaiah the son of Amos did see. Lift ye up a banner upon the high mountain, exalt the voice unto them, shake the hand that they may go into the gates of the nobles. I have commanded my sanctified ones, I have also called my mighty ones for mine anger, even them that rejoice in my highness. The noise of a multitude in the mountains, like as of a great people, a tumultuous noise of the kingdoms of nations gathered together. The Lord of hosts mustereth the host of the battle. They come from a far country, from the end of heaven, even the Lord and the weapons of his indignation, to destroy the whole land. How ye, for the day of the Lord is at hand. It shall come as a destruction from the Almighty. Therefore shall all hands be faint, and every man's heart shall melt, and they shall be afraid. Pangs and sorrows shall take hold of them. They shall be in pain as a woman that travaileth. They shall be amazed one at another. Their faces shall be as flames. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, cruel, both with wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate, and he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. I mean, I could go on, but this is total destruction, my friends. Total destruction on the day when the temple is open in heaven. Total devastation comes upon the earth. Total devastation which begins on the cloudy day. Hailstones will rain down from heaven, each weighing about 100 pounds. And the Bible says that mankind will blaspheme God. Mankind who are left behind will blaspheme God for the plague of the hail. Because that plague is exceedingly great. You see, but uh, uh, this day, hallelujah, is spoken about in Job. In Job uh, chapter uh, 38, look what God says to Job in the, in the first book that was ever written that was going to be part of the Holy Bible. Uh, uh, Job says this, and uh, uh, God tells Job this, have you entered into the treasures of the snow, or have you seen the treasures of the hail, which I have reserved against the time of trouble, against the day of battle and war? You see, God has a treasure of hail that he has reserved against the time of trouble, against the day of battle and war. The day of battle and war is this day. The day of battle and war is this day. The day of battle and war is this day. The day of battle and war is when this happens. The day of battle and war is when God comes on the cloud, when he descends from heaven, when he descends from heaven with uh, the voice of the archangel and, and with uh, the trumpet uh, of God, when he descends with a shout, hallelujah, that is the day of battle and war because from the clouds, hallelujah, from the clouds will come forth the hailstones. Uh, from the clouds, hallelujah. Because remember, the cloud is what covers the mercy seat. The cloud is what covers the throne of God. The cloud always goes before Jesus. Just like when Jesus was lifted up. Just like when Jesus was taken back up into heaven. When Jesus was taken back up into heaven 2,000 years ago. The Bible says that uh, when he was lifted up into heaven. 
and the disciples were still looking at him, a cloud received him out of their sight. So, but when Jesus comes again, the cloud will come first. And from the clouds will come forth hailstones and coals of fire. From the cloud will, will proceed great destruction. And this day is the day of sudden destruction that will come like a snare upon all those who are left behind. You see, the prayers of the saints will be answered on this day. The prayers of all the righteous will be answered on this day. That is why this angel who, who, who has the golden censer, he comes with the prayers of all saints, the prayers of all saints on this day from uh, 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 like the like the high priest in the Old Testament when he had the two handfuls of incense. Uh, one hand represented the prayers of those who look forward to the Messiah's coming. And, and the second hand speaks about Messiah's second coming, uh, the, the, the prayers of all of us and all who have gone before us when we look for his return. And on this day when the temple in heaven is open, uh, this angel who, who has the golden censer, he, he offers up the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar. He offers up the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar. And the smoke of that incense, uh, which came with the prayers of the saints, ascended up before God out of the angel's hands. Uh, the, the, the smoke is a pleasing aroma unto God. When the smoke on this day ascends up before God, God will appear on the cloud. God will appear on the cloud. Hallelujah. God will appear on the cloud right here. He will appear on the cloud with a sharp sickle. As Revelation 14 tells us, and Revelation 14 tells us on this day when God appears with the sharp sickle, uh, the angel will call out, the voice of the archangel will call out to the one who was seated on the cloud to cast in your sharp sickle and reap the earth, for the earth is ripe for reaping. Look at it, hallelujah. Let's look at it together. Revelation chapter 14. I'm going to get to it in another teaching, but I want to look, look at it right now. Revelation 14. 14, and I looked, and there before me was a white cloud, and seated on the cloud was one like the Son of Man, with a crown of gold on his head, and a sharp sickle in his hand. Then another angel came out of the temple, and called in a loud voice to him who was sitting on the cloud, Take your sickle and reap, because the time to reap has come, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. So he who was seated on the cloud swung his sickle over the earth, and the earth was harvested. So on this day, uh, the angel, when Jesus comes with the voice of the archangel, calls out to the one on the cloud, and he swings in his sickle, hallelujah, and he reaps the earth. He reaps the earth, and, and those who are ready are taken up into the Father's house. We're taken up like John into the Father's house. We're taken up when the door is open in heaven. We're taken up here. And we all we see is the voices and the thunders and the lightnings. We see the ark of his covenant, hallelujah. We see the ark of his covenant, hallelujah. We see the noises, the thunders, and the lightnings. But we don't see we don't see any of the plagues. We don't see the great hail. We don't see the great hail that comes on this day. We don't see the great earthquake that comes on this day. Uh, all these plagues uh, are for those who are left behind. This is the day of sudden destruction that comes uh, from the Almighty. For upon all those who, who are left behind, upon all those who, who refuse uh, the invite to the marriage supper of the Lamb, who refuse to repent and believe the gospel, to the lukewarm church, uh, to the church of Sardis who, who would not watch, to the church of Laodicea uh, 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 who was lukewarm, who thought that they were rich, uh, to, 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 to the church of uh, Thyatira who, who would not uh, repent of their sexual immorality, uh, as well as all the world, all those who lie in the hands of the wicked one. You see, the Bible says that there were only five uh, wise virgins, and, and, and the five who were wise, they were ready. They were ready for this day. The five who were wise were ready for this day. They were, they were ready to be caught up. They were ready to go into the Father's house, just like John, when the door in, is open in heaven. And they were caught up immediately. We'll be caught up immediately on this day, the five wise virgins, because when the call goes out, when that midnight cry goes out, we'll be changed instantly because we'll have oil. We'll have the truth. We have the Holy Spirit. But for the five unwise virgins, for the five foolish virgins, uh, those who, 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 who don't have any oil in their lamp, uh, when this day comes, uh, they'll be left behind with all the wicked. 
they'll be left behind on this earth with all the wicked and they will have to go through the uh, terrible day of the Lord, the day of sudden destruction, which just begins with this destruction. You see, because there's a whole lot more to come. There's a whole lot more to come during those last seven years, but this day begins it. When, when when mankind blasphemes God because of the plague of the hail. And remember, when Yeshua comes back at the Battle of Armageddon, the Bible tells us that he destroys everyone who's left behind, who survived up until, up until that point. He destroys everyone by the breath of his mouth and by the brightness of his coming. So this is totally different from uh, the second coming when he appears. Uh, 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 this is when he comes on the cloud. This day is on, on the cloudy day, which is about to happen. And I pray that you will uh, be blessed by this teaching. And Yeshua his name, I pray and ask it all.